Thank you very much, Grace, for coming along. You're so, um, yeah, um, basically, just want to sort of introduce you to my audience and talk about it. And we've got Nick here, your new fiance. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I think it'd be really interesting to talk about lots of different things involving what that, you know, what your life involves and how it can help other people too. So, um, yeah, well, let's start with how it all began and that, like, what what was your life before your injury and whatnot? That I'll let you go ahead and talk about. <laughs> Um, yeah, pretty boring. <laughs> it was just pretty basic, you know, just working flat out, um, living, um, struggling to pay bills, you know, just the normal nine to five rubbish that you get. Mm. And yeah, it didn't really do much at all. <laughs> and then, yeah, so um, obviously you had, you're, I don't actually know how you had your accident, so. Oh, do you not? No, no, I, I tend not to ask people, I just like. Yeah, I know what you mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, like, how old were you when it all happened? I was 22, it would have been um, just over five years ago now, so it was February 2014, and um, driving on the country roads, which Dorset's obviously famous for, and it was when we had the, the really bad day like, flooding, and it was the pothole roads, and really mm. shocking weather, and um, I was going along a, a road, and someone pulled out of a side road, and then stopped when they saw us like, come in, and if the swerve around them, I was passenger and then went into a field and the car flipped onto on a drain in the fields and then rolled a couple of times and it was on the second roll and the impact just broke my C5, burst my C6 and fractured my C7. Wow. So, <laughs> so, did, did so a good pretty job. dramatic experience. Then, yeah. <laughs> Do you remember anything at the time about it? Like, did you remember like, what that was like at the time or was it? Yeah. Yeah, because I didn't actually, I wasn't unconscious so I just remember sitting there and thinking I've got to get out of the car because it looked like it was on fire because the front was like steaming but it turned out just the radiator was bust luckily and I was thinking I can't move my legs and I just remember like thinking I've got to look down to see if I'm impaled because I couldn't feel the pain I was thinking I've got to be brave I've got to look down zip it well and have a look and then I looked and I was just like okay my legs are there they're literally just fine they're just there yeah like, why can't I move them and I couldn't move my arms and I was just like sat there like Okay, I think I'm going to need like a little bit of help. And I was yeah. like, get out the car. And I was like, can't, literally cannot get out. Yeah. <laughs> so then I just remember fire brigade coming out and then some girl, you know, that you see on the TV, getting the roof cut off and being just... dragged out. <laughs> and then air ambulance down to, um, it was French A in Bristol, which isn't there anymore. I'm spending 10 days in there. Hmm. So uh, do you, like, when you had the ex that experience, did you know anything about spinal cord injury at the time or have any sort of knowledge? Of, so you... Dude, it just like what's happening so it literally <laughs> was it was like oh, why can't i move and then you know you like see like watch home city or casualty and you're thinking this happens on there but i don't know what they do <laughs> like, you don't see the rehab that goes in afterwards you're just like oh they're okay afterwards <laughs> yeah, yeah 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 it's often it's like oh they've recovered they're yeah like, yeah it's yeah like, oh, <laughs> a couple of like weeks they're written out for and then it's in the back and they're fine <laughs> yeah so how like yeah um once you had your accident like what was like what was it like the next sort of couple of days in that afterwards you know where you were in hospital do you have much memory of that back then a little bit i don't i think i was on quite a lot of morphine so i remember um or whatever they put me on <laughs> i remember weirdly i do because i had my operation to stabilize my neck the day after so it's on the monday and i remember just vaguely some kind of i don't know whether it was on the operating table if i was just so spaced out it just seemed like it was all coming in at once but someone was saying no they haven't tightened the bolts tight enough so I then had to go back under. I have no idea what that was about. <laughs> and then I just remember being in the hospital and just laying flat and not... Because at the time I couldn't move my arms. So I was actually just totally dependent on people and um, really dreading getting my hair washed because all the glass and the mud and that. And mm. I really wanted it done, but I was thinking it's going to hurt like hell like trying to brush that. So yeah. at the time, that was my biggest fo focus. And I wasn't worried about the rest. I was like, my hair got to get washed. <laughs> and I really didn't want it. <laughs> So I just remember feeling all that, and then, yeah, I was pretty out of it for a couple of days. I've been told I really wasn't happy, mm. <laughs> like, to start with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Quite angry at the world, I think. And then, yeah. then it just kind of, you know, family pulled me through. Because they were literally there all the time, like, the whole time I was in Bristol, 24-7. Just yeah. had support, like, off my little niece and nephew and brother sister you know everyone just the whole family was there pulling me through so oh, that's good yeah, yeah it was cool yeah it's a uh, family in that time is very important you know having them there and you know having them support you it's when you don't really want support you just want to be like, yes. leave me alone i want to hate the world <laughs> yeah 
yes. <laughs> I think my sister's at the front of that quite a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, she, she tells me. Yeah, uh, it's good that they, you know, they stick around. You know, that's what family's for, and that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah they really pulled me through. So, and then we went to Salisbury after ten days being a French A. And I don't think I could move my arms very well then because I remember when I got to Salisbury at lunchtime. Um, they literally had to feed me as soon as I got in, sort of like flat out bed rest. Because it's weird, because in French A, I don't know if you have the same, like they let you sit up in the first like hospital I went to, and then Salisbury, you're flat out for seven mm. weeks. It was totally different. Yeah, I was free, I was flat for eight weeks for while I was in Poole, which is just down the road here. And then I went, when I moved to Salisbury, I was still flat. You know, they just didn't move me really for eight weeks. 16 weeks. <laughs> Eight weeks. Oh, okay. Weeks. Was it sixteen in total? No, eight, yeah, sorry, eight, eight in total. Oh, okay. Yeah, so it was just, four, oh yeah, it was four weeks here and then four weeks in Salisbury. Oh, okay. Holy. Yeah, yeah. it was just like uh, eight weeks staring at the ceiling. Yeah, yeah. You, you see every, you know, every single single dot that's yes. in the ceiling. <laughs> you count all the tiles or whatever, and yeah, you got no idea that like, when they move on the bed either, like where you're going, do you? No, it's like, like picture. yeah. How do you feel when you sit up after that amount of time? Do you feel dizzy? Yeah, dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so what they do is they have it where you're very slowly progressed. It's not like, you know, you're lying down for eight weeks oh, and then you just suddenly sat up. <laughs> yeah. like, right, now you're in your wheelchair. It's like, first day is like five minutes, then it's 10 minutes the next day, then it's 15 minutes, and that goes on for like three or four week period yeah. until you're up all, all day. Mm. And even then, you're like, at the end of the day, you're Yeah, yeah, I was talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's crazy the, when you think like you've been in bed that long you're just like oh, I want to get back to bed now <laughs> yes yeah <laughs> yeah people that you say it to visitors don't you and they're you've just spent like seven weeks flat out you're like yeah I'm so tired man yeah. <laughs> it doesn't wipe you out you're just exhausted like you've yeah. just run a marathon and, yeah it yeah. is isn't it you literally just the fatigue I remember someone you know you get the people come around to visit you mm. in hospital and saying like you won't realise how tired you get and I was thinking at the moment I'm alright yeah, and that's and then all of a sudden it just hits you and you're like, well, like I couldn't focus on anyone. Yeah, no, it's horrible. You're just in and out all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but it's you know, it's what it is. Mm. And then like obviously, once you sort of got past that sort of stage of getting up and then you started doing your rehab and that, what was it like? You know, you've got some function. Obviously, we you know you're not still not moving your arms. So yes. what was it like with the recovery? Um, yeah. hard, but where you I literally are well I was laid up for seven weeks um the physios came on with the little weights to do yeah, yeah so I was doing a lot of that on the bed and then um used to take you down to the gym and do like some stuff down there mm. um and but you make in a bed as well don't know, as part of your, um, <laughs> yeah you laughed at that didn't you because yeah. <laughs> yeah. he says I can make the bed at home now <laughs> they didn't make me make the bed thank god did they not <laughs> no it's a yeah. sexist thing, I think. Yeah, I think, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Me and Katie were there trying to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So he, he's not going to make the bed anyway. So. Yeah. <laughs> Someone they thought I would. <laughs> yeah. No, he didn't after I'd done it. It was a poor state of affairs afterwards. Yeah. After the whole hour. Task, yeah. It was, yeah. It was little tasks of um, picking up like a knife and fork for the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eating. It literally took, it took longer to eat in hospital than it takes me to eat now. Which is yeah, saying something. It's gold. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it felt. Um, it's motivating because you just want to do the best you can to get better. Yeah. yeah. Like, the more you do, the more yeah. you can do. So. Exactly, yeah. If you just keep focusing on that, then you kind of think that, yeah, you are going to help benefit yourself. Like doing transfers to get strong enough to do them, you've got to, you know, do the exercise and the weights and all that to get there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But it helps you in day to day life and it pulls off. So. Mm. Is there anything you can sort of remember from those days that sort of stands out, like while you were in hospital? Because how long were you in for? Uh, five months. So, so it's a relatively short time. Yeah, I was some lucky. People, yeah, because yeah. I was I was in eight months, and then but I knew people in there that were in there for over a year. Some people like over mm. two years. It's like, gosh, that's um a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, it depends on like how you know because some people don't just sustain a spinal injury; they sustain lots of different injuries and that along the way or some people have such high dependency it's just like they need to be stable before they can go home so it makes sense doesn't it yeah so you've been in there for yeah luckily five months really isn't a long yeah. time yeah it's good so um yeah like was there anything in that sort of five months that you remember or um 
I mean, met like lifelong friends in there definitely because when you're in there, um, we were quite lucky that there was like six of us around about the same age. Mm. So um, you instantly just gel together straight away, and yeah. we all had our injuries at the same time. Um, pretty much, I think it was within weeks of each other. So we all were going through the stages together. Yeah, and it was that I will always remember and cherish. Well, I mean, I still see them now, and they're going to be stuck with me for life <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah i think that helped get me through it um and when you go out in downtown for the first time on the bus mm. that's really intimidating yeah and scary but fun as well because you've got to sit with your back to the traffic and face everyone on the bus you're just sat there with like a collar on like hey <laughs> <laughs> trying to blend in here but you really don't <laughs> And then you got a um, girl at the little ramp on the bus and then going to Salisbury Town or City Centre for the first time and actually experiencing cobbles yeah, I was and say, pavements. It's probably the, one of the most cobbly places in the country. It's like, let's go here in a wheelchair for the first time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> straight in the deep end. But I think that helps because then it literally is real life. Is Yeah, that's that is real life. Like, yeah, because you go a lot of places and why have they got cobbles everywhere? <laughs> yes, yeah, why do they hate me? And you go in a supermarket, why can't everything be like this? <laughs> yes. Because <Yeah. laughs> it's so smooth. <laughs> yeah, if I could do my train around the supermarket, it'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> Fly around shopping malls. <laughs> exactly, yeah. You need one push and you're in the aisle. <laughs> yeah, see how far I get speed up, go. <laughs> but so, yeah, it's good. Cool, so like when you left hospital and that um obviously uh, yeah what, what was your sort of situation there when you left you know did you go straight into i think you were living with your mum but in the front room were you living with yes. yeah <laughs> I was yes. say, I think I you said about that. <laughs> so what was yeah explain about that situation cramped, cramped. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was um it's a tiny room in there literally um had a single bed in it and a hoist um well, one of the gantry hoist things, um, and a little like hospital style table which could go over the bed, and that was about it. Um, we managed to get some like clothes rails in there, so we we're trying to make it as homey as possible. Like it was my grand's house, okay. So it wasn't easy to adapt or anything, and because it was her house, I was very conscious that I would be moving out, and I didn't want to make major changes to her home. Yeah, yeah. You know, she'd been there for years, and she was possibly in her 90s or just turning um, into her 90s at that point so I was very conscious that you know she's got everything how she likes it and that's how she deserves I mean that's her home I didn't want to change anything about her but there was no wet room um, I could only get downstairs um, the kitchen I couldn't really access so I was very heavily dependent um, I had carers coming in the morning um, I don't think I ever had carers at night because um, in hospital they were saying they'd need them, but then they were like, "You have to be in bed by 10. <laughs> I was like, "No." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "It's not really me." <laughs> so um, just relied on them very heavily in the morning, and obviously my mum, I relied very heavily on her, so she's caring for my gran and for me, mm. which um, put a lot of strain on her. Yeah. But definitely. she never let it show. Because she's my mum. <laughs> yeah, that's what I do. That's yeah. What I do, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she um she was a real like savior for us. They always like get me food and drinks when I wanted them. Um, if I wanted lifts to go see friends, come on, obviously driving at the time, she would always give me lifts. Or my friends were more than happy to come and pick me up. Like, yeah, it's very good. lucky. Yeah, very very lucky. <laughs> that was ridiculous, but it did mean I had to get my transfers nailed. Because I remember the first night um when I came home, my mum had her friend stay in. And she was like, right, do you need help transferring into bed? And I was like, no, 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 I've got this, I'm fine. Like, you know, don't bathe me, I've got it down to a T. So she was like, right, I'm going to make a cup of tea then. She left the room, I went to transfer, and I don't know if I spasmed or whether I was being too cocky, in position, whatever, straight on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> so I just sat there for a bit, she came back in, like, the doors behind me. She came in, she was like, you don't need a hand at all then, no, you're going to sleep like that. <laughs> I was like, about me being a cocky little idiot. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of help. <laughs> so I did have to adjust to asking her for help, but mm. got there in the end with it. And she she had the balance right. She'd help if I needed it, um, but she wouldn't push the help on me because yeah. I could get quite snappy. 
Fair she'd be like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, I'm not going to offer it. I'm here if you want it, but I'm not offering because I know that it was bite my head off. I was like, yes, yes, I will. <laughs> but we nailed it in the end. Bless her. So, yeah, while you were living there and that, did you find that because of the situation you're in, you learned a lot more about what you could do and that because you're restricted and that? Yeah. Yeah, I think if you're just thrown into something like that, you've got to learn fast. Yeah. You do just get chucked into it and you don't realise um, just quite what you need until you are out of the hospital environment and then real yeah. life hits you and you're just like, okay, so there is like no safety net. This is it. This yeah. is real life. <laughs> yeah, it <is. laughs> it's happening. It's a daunting experience, but it does sort of show you like who you are as a person and your character in that, in that moment, I feel. I think, yeah, I mean... You do get to learn a lot about yourself, and I definitely, I think I'm diff. Well, I'm, I'm definitely a different person now to what I was before having spinal cord injury. Um, I think before I was quite just like in my own little world, like mm. you know, I didn't need to so much rely on people or anything. So I was pretty independent, and now obviously being spinal cord injury, I rely quite heavily on. Well, you know, I rely heavily on people. Yeah. <laughs> so you said you actually do more now. Than you did before your accident, definitely. Like sports and, and activities. And yeah, I definitely do a, a lot more. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we haven't actually got a spare like day in a diary at the moment, have we? <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's how it should be, really. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, obviously that when you have this injury, especially in the early days, there are a lot of times where you're not doing much, and like it's important to fill those times because otherwise, you know. That's when stuff like depression and anxiety and that comes in, so... Yes, yeah, yeah. it's so important to keep busy. Yeah. Did you experience any sort of mental health side effects of... Um, not so much, no, because I was um, lucky with that. Where I did live, I had friends that were always around, and mm. I had my mum who was always around because she was caring for my gran anyway. So from that point of view, the support that my family gave literally just stopped anything... Um, and because everyone was so focused on keeping me busy, I was lucky in that there was just so much going on at once. Yeah. So I didn't have time to stop and think, actually, this, you know, the other side of it. Yeah. Um, so, no, I've never really experienced the downfalls of it. Um, and I know it does hit people quite hard. Yeah, And it, it can, obviously. Um, but it's not letting it, I think, is the main thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... You've got to, like, just keep on top of it all. Yeah, it's all about, um, you know, managing yourself, you know, through doing all these other things and having those people around you, so... Yes, I mean, you do obviously get bad days, where yeah, you just... You, uh, but, I mean, even before I got bad yeah, days... Everybody has bad days. Exactly. Like, that's just a normal thing. That's <laughs> being a human. Yeah. Being someone with a spinal cord injury, so... Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so, you, yeah, you get days where you're stressy, or you're just like, why? Like, yeah. it's raining really hard, it's really cold, and my legs just buzzing out of the car, like, yeah. just want to be able to get in. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, I think it's, it's part of, part and parcel of life. And like you say, everyone has it, regardless of injury or well-being. I think it's just how humans are. Yeah, definitely. So uh, with regards to spending your time, you know, how we met was through wheelchair rugby. Which yeah. Which is quite an interesting way to spend your time. Because <laughs> um, wheelchair rugby is one of those fantastic sports, which is very few of the women and men compete against each well, other together yeah. and against each other. So, how yeah, tell me all about why you got involved with wheelchair rugby and um it was mainly a scare thing <laughs> so i was like i think i just wanted to feel um because everyone was chatting about it and um my friend i met in hospital he played it down in devon yeah and he was like you've really got to try it and i was like oh i don't know because i'm not i've never done team sports i've not seen the appeal of team sports because i stress myself out quite a lot i'm like what if I, you know, do something wrong and then the whole team, I would just visualize like, everyone would be like, what did you do that for? That's a stupid thing. I like built myself up into a bit of a panic. And he was like, it's not like that at all. Like literally just give it a trial. And I remember we did do a taster session when we were in patients in Salisbury where um, I think it was the sharks came down from Southampton and they did like a little taster on a Wednesday or something. And I remember like doing that and thinking, oh my God, this is like really fun, but also they are so good. Like, I know I'd never be on that, like, level at all. So it was a bit of, like, what if I don't... If I don't do it, am I always going to regret not trying something? Because I don't, mm. like, not, like, saying no to things. Like, trying it and being like, okay, I didn't like that. Or trying it and be like, oh, my God, I absolutely love it. Which turns out what happened with rugby. Yeah. Which I never expected. And it was totally out of the blue. Because when you see it, like, on TV, it's pretty intense, isn't it? Mm. 
pretty hard hitting and pretty um yeah it's not <laughs> quite like that all the time at no. the lower level like that's they're elite guys that are, yes. you know that most of them are athletes before their injury and they're athletes still now yeah and it's like yeah that's so upper body strength see. and everything yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah they're really going at it so what you've been doing that probably like five years now about yeah now? i think i joined june 2015 so four yeah five years no four years Four years. Four years. Yeah. My maths. <laughs> <laughs> I was never a mathematician. <laughs> yeah, so um, you've obviously stuck at it and it's something you've loved and that. It's, what sort of aspects of wheelchair rugby is it specifically that you... I think like? it is actually, it's turned out to be the thing that I feared, so it is the team. So um, they are just, because everyone is in a similar situation, like it's not all spinal cord injuries or it's people that have got upper body strength and they're just amputees or whatever. Um, but because everyone has been through like kind of similar experiences or yeah. I don't know it's just like that kind of feel like when you're there you're all together you're all one you all know what it's like when you just jump into that chair just forget it all yeah <laughs> and just go for it and just have fun and get your fitness going so really like I was out for 10 weeks from it last year yeah you hated it didn't you yeah, yeah I hated it. and for a couple of people at the club it's their only social Mm. yeah a week so they really go for it yeah yeah it's the social side and mm. i think in the early days when mum used to, well she still does go with me but it helped her as well to talk to people yeah and get um like that side of um you know spinal cord injury because she always spoke with other carers or just having a cup of coffee with the chair lady um, yeah. down there and it just helped her as well i think to know that actually it's all fine yeah <laughs> it can yeah. you know it's not it seems pretty daunting but actually everything's fine yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's always really good it. to speak to people that have had the similar experiences just to know you're not crazy for a start <laughs> yes <laughs> <laughs> i think you might be wrong there i think i'm slightly <laughs> <laughs> no, no <comment. laughs> so yeah um like with it like you being a female as well playing wheelchair rugby like how does that sort of you know because I, I think I know, but I don't know if the, like, I think it just makes no difference when you're out on the court, you know, whether That's you're, true. you know, some people might see it as, you know, female, male sports are very separated, but with wheelchair mm. rugby, it's like, there isn't, there's no separation. It's true, <laughs> yeah. there, there isn't at all, like, they, like, when you're spectating it, it's not, with it's all the same, really, isn't it? Yeah, and you find yourself not even thinking about it, it's, yeah. it's funny, actually, because there isn't any, I can't think of any other sport. That does this that mixes and yeah. teams. Especially no contact sport. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I, I know from personal experience, so I'm not going to go easy on you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. I've got, literally, I um, someone went into me last week and just whacked me straight out of the court. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, yeah, this is this is why I do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you do all get treated the same. Yeah, I think that's a really great part of it as well. That's one of the beauties of the sport and what's probably makes it more unique than anything else is the fact that it's so you know it, like it's one of those sports that is open to you know such a wide range of people as well and different yeah. disabilities so yeah it doesn't matter like what your disability is at all like, yeah. it is that all-inclusive sport that whether you're really high injured um amputee it doesn't matter at all they like because there's a new version as well which means that you can compete um with ptsd as well okay so the, i mean it's very inclusive and it's a yeah. very inclusive sport so i don't think of can't think of any other sport that does do that no it's really really cool like that there's that opportunity out there for people you know yeah gets people out and about and mm. helps people you know stay sane <laughs> <laughs> so um with you saying you fill your days up quite a lot what other stuff do you do with your day-to-day -day life um, so I work now. Yeah. Um, been doing that for a couple of years. Um, same part of time, like literally, ten to fifteen hours a week or something. But it's it's a lifesaver as well. Yeah. Because I didn't realise actually how much I missed work, which mm. is a really weird thing to say. <laughs> <laughs> but going back into that kind of, I think just having something I know what I'm doing just about, <laughs> and you know to be able to contribute back and help a little bit um so what is it that you do i work in a gp surgery just doing them at local admin okay so just behind the scenes um it's really flexible i can go in whenever um do what hours suit me i'm very lucky i'm like my sister works there okay so um 
she helped secure that for me and just to be able to go back and feel part of a team yeah i think is quite important and just there is i think there is still a stigma mm. with like work and um when i've spoken to other um people they seem surprised mm. and it's like it's not it shouldn't be it's you yeah. know everyone is the same everyone's capable of doing what you know whatever they want in their life like people can still do day-to-day -day things yeah but there still seems to be like a little bit of a stigma about it which i think is a shame but i think mm. it is becoming less and less is that something you've personally experienced about any of that stigma like yeah a lot of people have been surprised like um when they s ask like what you do and the first thing i don't know what they expect you to say but um when as soon as you say you know you can't do this because you know you've got to go to work and they're like oh you work it's like yes because <laughs> 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 i think you know i can still i'm lucky to still be able to do it so mm. and I, I want to you know just to keep my brain active and to keep to you know just to feel part of a team again and go out and about and just learn new skills because i had no idea what the hell what I was doing. <laughs> That's good. It's really you challenge yourself. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was a massive challenge. And like, as soon as I said, like, GP surgery, I was like, oh my gosh, this is daunting because it's like dealing with like other people. Yeah. And things like that. And I was really worried about it. And, but yeah, I do like to challenge myself and keep myself on top of stuff. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Do you find like, when you came to the job and that, was there any sort of, you say they're flexible with hours and that, like, were they quite understanding of the injury? Have they, like, made any sort of adaptations or have they even needed to, sort of thing? Do you... Luckily, because we're at the GP surgery, um, not a lot is needing to be doing. Um, I have contacted Access to Work because the doors aren't automatic. Mm. But um, turns out the regulations have changed lately. So they can't actually, unfortunately, do adaptations to the building. Mm. But um, I'm lucky in that the staff um, are really helpful, so they will get the doors for That's me. Um, they don't mind at all, and they just make it seem seamless. And where I can't like go to the canteen, um, they will just make me drinks or whatever. And when my sister's there, mm. um, she'll like we'll do like lunches. Yeah, you make a soup, don't you? To mm. take in, she heats up the soup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the little fat lunches are taken for us. I think that's why she lets me work there. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I come with food. <laughs> it's always a good uh, bargaining tool. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, how long have you been working there for now then? Um, two and a bit years. Nice. Yeah. Is this something you want to carry on doing or is there any sort of aspirations for work that you want to do? Um, I'm doing an open uni course um, two years into that as well actually um, on psychology and counselling. Um, that's a six year course. So we'll see how that goes <laughs> <laughs> and see how I'm feeling by the end of it if I'm absolutely sick of psychology. <laughs> but if not, I would like to be able to help people and do maybe that the counselling side of things. Um, it's basically just seeing what happens, yeah. um, how life pans out, because we want to do a bit of travelling, don't we? Mm. And see what's out there and see yeah. the world. <laughs> Definitely, Which yeah, you know about. <laughs> yeah, yeah, do it quite a bit. So. But yeah, so... That's interesting with the psychology. Is there a specific sort of, you say you want to help other people? Is that like anything to do with the sort of spinal injury side of it or? Um, to start with, I thought it would be. Um, and then doing the course, because um, it opens up different avenues like, as you're learning and going. So I actually am quite interested in the whole um, like mental health side to help people. That's what's gained my interest at the moment and how like your brain cognitively works and things. Um, I did health based module last year which was quite interesting there and um it was literally there was a bit about spinal cord like mm. one of the modules was on that and that's actually the one that i scored the worst in <laughs> 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 which is really ironic <laughs> but that was just about how the body works and um the association with the brain and that and that was quite interesting so at the moment i thought it was just going to be pure but i think it's just open to seeing what other modules grab my interest the most and yeah going from there because if I enjoy doing it, then that make it easier to help. Yeah, help definitely. Others. <laughs> yeah. Um, so what well, I'll go back to when we talk about your house, because obviously once you moved out of your nan's house, you went into your ha own house. Sort of, what was that experience like? You know, um, was the house adapted to anything already, or did you have to do a lot to it? So I bought the house in twenty fifteen. 
Um, and it was already a bungalow. It was actually um, Nick's parents' house. <laughs> but it was um, all the bungalow, and it was pretty wide doors. But since then, they pretty much revamped the whole thing, haven't they? Mm. Um, yeah, Nick, he doesn't even recognise it inside at all, do you? No, it's completely different. <laughs> It's got a new kitchen, um, it's got a new living room. Um, Widen the corridors. Widen corridors, um, automatic front door and back doors. Um, Hoist. Hoists. Hoists. We've got a little um, gym area. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I approve. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> We're getting to use it a bit more, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, every, every other day we try and go in there and just yeah, spend about it. Mm. Like, just a couple of hours in there for lunch. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, it's a good routine. Yeah, it saves having to like, because when you have to go out to a gym, I find that I was really struggling. Yeah, yeah, fair, yeah, because not all gyms are that accessible or. No, the everyone active one that I not everyone active um, the Bridport one I can't remember what. I don't think it was everyone active, but the Bridport gym was quite accessible. Luckily, mm. they had like a little wheelchair hand bike and stuff as well, which was really cool, but um. It was just in the winter when it was dark, and I was like, oh, there's where I can go use the gym. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sometimes can be a bit of a struggle to get get the motivation to go. It's just yes, like, yeah. yeah. You, when Because it's at home, you obviously combine your um, uni work with FES bike. Yeah, I'm just sat oh, there, yeah. just like reading the book yeah. just, <laughs> on my FES bike. Yeah. <laughs> like sweating buckets. But. Yeah. I personally wouldn't be able to do that. I'd concentrate on reading so I can't do that. But <laughs> I, got to it. I don't think a lot goes in. <laughs> <laughs> so um, obviously you went from a small one room to a house with fully kid out. What was that sort of, how did that sort of change your life? Ridiculously, dramatically, it was... Mm. Um, yeah, it was just so weird to be able to access everything and have a shower. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just been so long and not struggle to move around, like, thin corridors and... Doors. Doors, yeah, so I can mm. all paint off mum's doors. <laughs> and, you know, mm. so get in the kitchen. So much more independent when you're straight away. Yeah, yeah, because you, you obviously knew me before and after moving out, didn't you? We moved into it together. Yeah. I was the one lifting you into the in and out of the bath. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was strange to the, the first thing he said to me right on the floor from the show. I'm like, okay, right. Oh, <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. It was brilliant. Play, yeah, it was great. Yeah, it was really nice. Yeah, it's just so yeah, eye opening. Just yeah. Yeah, because my mum's recently had hers redone on the inside. Like she had quite a big extension put on as well, and before it was very narrow corridors with carpet. And it's like, oh. <laughs> which is the worst thing if you're in a wheelchair. Yeah. So, and like now, she, I was like, blimey, just to be able to turn around is a big difference. But she's yes. Like, she's, she's, <laughs> rather than going backwards everywhere. Just, yeah. Because you, know, you get stuck in a place, you're like, right, I've got to go backwards all the way. In. Yeah. And on carpet, it's tough too. You know, oh. end up crashing into things. Rugs as well. Yeah. They are the worst. Yeah, you start, <laughs> start curling up on you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah your front casters get caught, you're pushing the rugs. Like, oh, no. <laughs> Yeah, I, find, I do notice a difference now when we go to mum's. I'm like, why is it I finding this so hard? I'm like, yes, you've got carpets. It's quite a thick one as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because my girlfriend says when we move in together, she wants carpets in the bedroom. I'm like, no, no. we're not having a carpet. No, no, no. no. <laughs> you can have a rug that you take away every time I'm in the room. <laughs> yes, yeah. I'm <laughs> set up for that, but no, no carpets. <laughs> yeah, it's all wooden floor fits. <laughs> yeah, we've got none of that over at all. Mm. Oh, upst- well, we've got a little yeah. dormer upstairs, and that's got um, carpet, but... Yeah, just the rest of it, it's all it's free and easy. <laughs> you, 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 you not get up there, you not got any way of getting up there yourself. I've got a um, lift so I can get up and down, but at the minute it's um, literally just like a little attic okay. for space for Christmas decorations. Oh, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw a massive collection of Beanie Babies. Nope. Quite a few <laughs> Beanie Babies. <laughs> <laughs> Very 90s of you. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah, not the new ones, not the yeah, ones with the big eyes. Ones, yeah, yeah, I don't like the ones with the big eyes, yeah, it's scary. With the eyes change. Yeah. <laughs> so um yeah so obviously you said you both living together now like I think we should probably talk about that um yeah so how did you guys meet and like, go ahead oh, after well, you yeah. guys I remember when <laughs> <laughs> I remember when back in the day yeah I, yeah I used to live there with my parents and then I moved out um up to Cambridge actually um next thing mum was telling me talking to me on the phone about a lovely girl that bought the house and she's getting on really well with her and she comes around for the cake and tea and she'd used the house and I was like, oh yeah, yeah I didn't think too much of it and um, 
Yeah, and then you did buy a house, and then about three years later, we randomly met on online, and then figured out who each other were oh. in the space of a few minutes. <laughs> Just, uh, it, was re- it was really strange, and um, yeah, I sent you a picture of mum and said, "Can't you mind talking to you?" She said, "Oh, she's lovely." And I said, "Oh, I know." Yeah, we just hit it off, didn't we? And yeah. And then we kind of ended up living at your mum's together. Yes. <laughs> we all creeped up because there's four dogs involved as well. Oh, right. We've got yeah. that. <laughs> recently five dogs that have been there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they all moved in there as well. Um, so yeah, when we got into, <laughs> into our house, yes. the space was very welcome, wasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> we shared a room with four dogs. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's, it was, that's a yeah. lot of heavy breathing in the night with the dogs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So. yeah. And one snores, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was very welcome and it was nice that they had their, their own space as well and it wasn't yeah. like so just cramped up and I wasn't constantly trying not to run them over, although I still, that does still happen. Yeah. <laughs> it took quite a few months to get it how we wanted it, didn't it? There's lots of, you know, putting, putting your mark on the house and finding things to well, actually, we bought a lot of stuff before we actually moved in properly, didn't we? Furniture and stored it all in the garage. And yeah, we were quite lucky because it was done like two months before we moved in, wasn't it? So we just did a phase moving in because we had somewhere that we were staying, so it wasn't a big, like, had to get kicked out and move on. We were really lucky in that we could just phase it and get what we needed and then yeah. we set all that, didn't we? And then it was just tied down because the neighbouring garden looked nice because that was kind of, you know, the builders just concentrate on the house. And yeah. And leave the garden <laughs> off the front of alone, yeah. So there was a lot to do out there. Yeah, and you became like Alan Titchmarsh overnight, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lived in a huge pond that was totally overgrown. So we've now got a fish in it, to be fair. Yeah. And, and a nice track for you to go and look in, into the pond, because it's at the end of the, right at the end of the lawn. Yeah. So there's a nice chain of pot there, isn't there? Which we also then had one put in to get to the post box, which was then by the gate. Yeah. So that's something that we missed originally, isn't it? Yeah, so it's like after we moved in, we then thought, of the access and like the places I couldn't get to and we're like oh we have to call people back just to be able to get around the garden and like yeah. do these odd little bits because yeah the post box I didn't realise that I wouldn't actually be able to get to because <laughs> <laughs> of the long grass and stuff and it was just the little yeah. bits but they were a good team so they didn't mind coming yeah. out did they but there's one flaw that we've got with the gates that we don't know how to fix at the moment <laughs> is the gates think Nick Grace is a, is a car so they start uh, opening as she approaches. <laughs> How dare it? I know. I'm not that wide. <laughs> She's got to try and beat it to go up around the corner and then wait for them to shut before, she, before, before you can come back. Yes, yeah, so for a minute I'm like just sat on the concrete plinth like, okay, the gates have blocked me in. Yeah. <laughs> wait for them to come back down. She does do it with the wheelbarrow as well. Yeah. <laughs> keep forgetting. Oh. Um. So you were saying that you met online, mm. which... Um, about it. How was that like, you know, Grace being in a wheelchair? Was that something you'd experienced before, or like, mm-hmm. it's just it, with like I found there is obviously a stigma around people with disabilities and dating, and not many people understand it. And that, um, unless they've sort of maybe grown up with somebody that's been disabled, they might not understand that situation. So, be interested to see what. Yeah, what you thought though. Yeah. Unless you catfished mm. you, then it's <laughs> 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 got all our pre, yeah. pre-injury photos up there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> reputation goes for me. <laughs> no, personally, I can't imagine. I really can't imagine how that would uh, being in a wheelchair would put me off in the slightest. Because um, it it was your smile that got me straight away. I know it sounds a bit cheesy, but you know, there's a lot of these um, you know, pouty, you know, selfies on yeah. on these kind of sites, and I was fed up with it. Yeah. I didn't see anyone that sparked a little bit of magic for me, so um, I was due. I was going to delete it that night. And I thought I'll just have one more good thing. You know, it was a lovely photo of you just smiling. <laughs> so I thought, oh, and then um, yeah, I was just really looking forward to meeting you. But I, although the wheelchair thing didn't bother me at all, I panicked about our first date. I wanted to do the right things, say the right things. You know, when we get to the restaurant, I ask my friends, you know, should I, would Grace find it? Um, if I pulled out a chair for her, they go, it goes out of space. So I was just, I just wanted to do the right thing on on the night, and just get, yeah. But you taught me how to take down and put together the wheelchair on the first night, and I remember. Yeah, it, it was fun. Yeah, it was a yeah, because you insisted on picking me up, didn't you? And I was like, don't want to sound like you know really high maintenance. What car have you got? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're thinking, oh, damn it, I haven't got a Lamborghini. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we both lived in Weymouth. <laughs> and I was 
on my way to pick her up thinking she was already moved in at my old house mm. and then she messaged me and I was, I was just at Tesco getting petrol and saying oh you do know where I live don't you and I went yeah so I think I remember <laughs> you know where the house is <laughs> and she's 11 Cornwall Drive and I went, oh, that's not that's, <laughs> that's not Dorsh <laughs> yeah so I found out you living with your mum at the time and she didn't tell me no, I forgot and I was like getting late and late and I was thinking he's either really late or he stood me I'll just send a little courtesy yeah, message yeah. and be like she might live <laughs> yeah, so I'd around and come back yeah but it's funny I love that story yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah you got it in the car flying actually didn't you like dismantled it and mm. at least I was worried about transferring into like in the car because it, it's Astra in it, and I've never transferred into an Astra before I was thinking yeah. if it's going to be too low <laughs> like am I going to get stuck coming back out and making an absolute fool of myself yeah <laughs> which I do anyway so it was fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> any, your charm <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but any worries I had about you know once once we you know how to what to offer to help or what not to offer to help that just diminished straight away because we were just so natural sh- straight yeah. away so it was, mm. um, we just laughed all night didn't we and so just and that was it so uh, the rest of it I just I was very keen to learn afterwards and, and um, yeah. it was an eye opener for me and I've only known one other person in a wheelchair in the past and um, he was quite a high level wasn't he because cause yeah electric wheelchair yeah. yeah yeah so um what was it like you know um with other people in your life what they've sort of responded to it because with my experience my girlfriend you know she gets a lot of questions all the time regarding myself and our relationship and that yeah uh, do you i find get some very blunt questions from people yeah was, uh, for instance i was walking the dogs one day and um ran into an old lady she was just out walking um and she asked whereabouts i live and i said oh we live just up there and um i don't know how it got onto it like oh we were yeah. talking about gardens and things and I said my partner's in a wheelchair and the first thing she said oh can she have children <laughs> she was very blunt <laughs> <laughs> yeah, would you normally ask that yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah people do want to know things don't they yeah. and um, I didn't mind talking talking about it with people and no it just helps get the you know the stigma away doesn't it yeah exactly yeah. the more we talk about it yeah some people can think that's but other people find it a bit um, surprising like someone asked my mum didn't you know when while she was in a wheelchair I said yes <laughs> and I said oh that's so sweet yeah you get <laughs> the whole yeah it's like a, a charity thing yes <laughs> yeah he's like on a charity case <laughs> yeah no. what about your friends and that how did they sort of respond to it just absolutely fine yeah I get I, I they were all just looking forward to, to meeting you and, oh, that's good. and my mum mum was ecstatic because you know when, when she met you when you were buying the house one of the times when you left my mum turned around to my sister and said um, now why can't me, Nick meet someone as nice as that because <laughs> only about three years down the line so I will meet that exact person <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah your mum called it years ago didn't she yeah, <laughs> yeah. so about from your perspective on this um, like obviously going out on a date for the first time yeah, that was pretty scary. You said you were worried about the chair, weren't you? Which I wish you would have told me because I would have. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just an instinct. I was just naturally worried because I obviously spasm quite a lot, and I just thought if I just sit there shake it, is he going to think I'm having a fit or something? Or hmm. um, I can only eat with one hand, so I was like thinking, what's the restaurant got on the menu? So I was like googling that beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I could eat. <laughs> Not like being too obvious that I don't, you know, use my left hand. I should do, but I don't. Um, yeah, I, I, it was quite nerve wracking, but I think because I did just make sure that when I put the photos up, I did make it very clear that like, I was in a wheelchair. To, <laughs> I think most of them, apart from one <laughs> selfie, <laughs> you can see chairs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, um, we mentioned on, on, on your thing that you played wheelchair rugby, and then it all just clicked Grace and Wayne said, <laughs> Mum said a girl called Grace bought the house in a wheelchair. I think that helped because I had met your family before, so you, I think I was banking on you knowing a little bit about me. Well, instantly you remember that Mum said you were lovely and you had the best smile in the world and stuff. Yeah. I think I so. banked on that, so yeah. that really helped. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it would have been fine with that. <laughs> <laughs> had you any, had any dates before? No. Uh, no. No, no. Locked out on the first one then. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> no, you did good, didn't you? Yes, I did. I was very lucky. I am very lucky. No. Mm. 
yeah and, uh, and obviously you've got a ring on your finger now yes <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's my christmas present oh, lovely <laughs> <laughs> so how did yeah um what was tell me the story <laughs> <laughs> um well actually that's kind of um funny as well next um it was christmas morning and you like to get up really early and do presents don't you mm. And I've never been like no. getting up early, and I'm just like, yes. why? Why are we getting up early? I'm excited for Christmas, but you know. I like, remember from Wiltshire Rugby, Grace is oh, it's ten minutes late. Yeah, so, yeah, <laughs> yeah <that> was, <laughs> ten minutes. That's quite good. Yeah. <laughs> but your mum never used to do presents for the after, afternoon or the evening. You know? No, it's because we are just like little. a family that just don't do anything in early hours. Like yeah. if it's before twelve, you're lucky. To be fair. <laughs> And um, yes, yeah, so we got up at seven and I was like, oh, okay, it's our first Christmas together. I'm pretty excited. And then um, your family were coming around at half ten, weren't they, mm. that morning? Because you were doing like some massive meal for everyone. So um, everyone was coming around quite early. So we went into the living room and did our presents. And um, then I was like, right, got to feed the bunnies, got to feed the guinea pigs. You know, everyone needs to feed them now. He's like, don't worry about that. And I was like, well, they've got to feed them. And he was <laughs> like, well, hurry up and do it then. You were really like trying to get me to settle weren't you yeah and i was like i don't understand like you have to feed the animals <laughs> so just to do before everyone got yes <laughs> <laughs> and i just thought oh, maybe you just want to quit on the, the cleaning or something and all the cooking so i was like okay so um yeah sat and did all our presents and um then you disappeared out of the room didn't you mm-hmm. and um you came back in with like a really nice bunch of flowers and i was like oh thank you like, they're absolutely beautiful because they were like a christmas bouquet or something mm-hmm. weren't they and um so I thought that's what you'd obviously gone out of the room to get. And then you were still like on the floor in front of me, weren't you? Mm. And you're like, actually, there is one more gift that you can give to me. And I was like thinking, what have I forgotten to wrap that boy to go? I was like, and I was like, what? And he's like, I'm down on one knee. And because he's often down, <laughs> like kneeling down to with me, I was like, I was like, oh, are you? And I was like, oh my God. <laughs> and then the penny dropped. And I think I just went into like a mood of like, oh my God, and for about half an hour of our life yeah, that was a lot of oh my gods and then and then i was like oh yes by the way <laughs> and then you'd caught all of that on video hadn't you yeah i also caught it on the phone when i the day before i went to ask permission from grace's mum yeah you did it all yeah in this on video as well it's nice nice to capture things like that i think yeah you're really yeah. sneaky with stuff like that <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> lucky you took it yeah. After, after all the oh my god yeah <laughs> <laughs> then, like a mini breakdown I was like oh yeah <laughs> but yeah so that was Christmas day and then um, now the wedding's booked we've yeah. booked yeah. yes yeah. all this is yeah lovely yeah yeah, yeah we've um, steamed ahead to the town and we? yeah we went straight into it yeah yeah but it's been um, it's been fun like planning and organising things mm. but um a lot of like the people who obviously were invited, um, some of them are in wheelchairs, and they said, at least we know that it will be wheelchair accessible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I think everyone's reassured. Yeah, thoughts, thoughts going into it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We've been having ramps made for the actual venue, the, for the, the little bit that goes down to the bar, which of course, we need people <laughs> to be able yes. to get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I myself need to be able to get there. <laughs> Yeah. What did your mum say? Can't you just go out the front and back in? And you said, that's a typical able body comment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Like, that's what like, body people don't understand. Like, yeah. you have to go out in the cold and then back through a side entrance. Yeah. <laughs> so I know it's the wedding day. We are having ramps. Yes, yeah, is that, yeah. yeah. If there's going to be any day that we're going to stay indoors and go on ramps, it's today's going to be the day. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not going out across gravel or anything. It's all sorted and planned out. Because <laughs> it was finding an accessible venue, wasn't it? Which was mm. difficult. Because yeah. I'd been reading it up to find um, like how people deal like with being a disabled bride in a wheelchair. Because I thought there must be like some blogs and things out there about yeah. it. And it is a struggle because of finding um, transport. Yeah. Um, venues. Um, just anywhere really that ticks all the boxes yeah. <laughs> is quite a struggle. Um, it did make us laugh because we went to a wedding fair at the Italian villa and um, <laughs> we didn't realise that that's actually got a separate disabled entrance so we were going around. Have you ever been there? No, no, no. It's literally so many steps, isn't there? Out and the we didn't realise that the wedding fair was on three levels. Yes. <laughs> and we, we thought, oh, is this it? And then we went home. <laughs> but, yeah. So it's just like a couple of um, like 
stalls and that and then mm. we just went like to the back of the building which goes down to their gardens which is really pretty and we're like oh we'll go check that out the wedding fair's over <laughs> and um it was so many stone steps that you bounced me down wasn't it mm. and then it was as we were coming back up the stone steps and you were doing it backwards then they, someone decided to tell us now <laughs> she, she just went right now yeah that's actually the name of the entrance on the side <laughs> <laughs> So there's little quirks like that we've been finding along the way. <laughs> but you've managed to get most of, well, I assume all of it accessible for yourself. Yeah. Right there, yeah. 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 It's, it's nice with the car, when we spoke to the guys about the cars, they instantly just started talking about ones that they've got that would be the easiest to get into with the most space and where they could put the chair and things. They're really nice with Yeah. And knew their stuff. I don't know if they've had wheelchairs in there before. I can't remember, actually. But I think it's one of them you mentioned they've had a... Um, I think it was a groom that was disabled. But um, yeah, I, mean, I think people are helpful um, when you ask, you know, when you need them to be. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when you're trying to plan, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, we need a lot of um, help on the back of like just that front of things and side of things. And it's been really eye opening that people are quite educated and used to it and don't bat an eyelid. Because they're just like, oh yeah, no, it's fine, we'll make it happen. And it's not like, and make it happen in a whole, wholly like health and safety, you know, conscious way. It's like this is real life. You know, yeah. you know, this is <laughs> this is what happens, and you know, actually, health and safety kind of has to take a back seat sometimes. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's important that you get what you need to. Yeah. The day. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so um, yeah, I would talk about um the relationship side of that. Do you find I don't obviously know from a female's perspective being in a wheelchair is there anything that you feel is quite unique that would be quite helpful to people um, you know in your situation that is female that might be something that i've n- never even thought about because i don't know because <laughs> <laughs> i would even know so. <laughs> um no i to be honest um no it's all pretty standard you know the way we um do everything isn't it it's mm. all Something like special we have to accommodate for or anything. Um, whether that is just luck, I think, on my side. Um, and I think with you being just such a great person anyway. Okay. <laughs> 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 it's all pretty like flawless and seamless. It's good for my fitness because I'm always throwing you around taking you out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Keep you in shape. <laughs> um, but no, I think, um, yeah, we're just pretty pretty like stand on that part aren't we yeah we've got well we've got a really good just way of living that we've adapted just naturally to it when there's steps and things we just I yeah know, i know how to ha- handle them yeah. with, with the least with the least um bouncing back as possible <laughs> and ricocheting and stuff yeah we've um kind of got that matter don't we yeah yeah it's yeah. nothing like special or unique that we use um it's just literally just us cracking on mm. and getting on with life really <laughs> <laughs> so not a helpful response but no that situation realistic <laughs> it's funny with uh myself and my girlfriend we always say we've always we've got it the wrong way around i'm the tall athletic one that would probably be great at picking her up and moving her around but i'm the one in the wheelchair and she's, <laughs> yeah. she's yeah. never done sports in her life and she's, she's <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So when I when I have to get down on one knee, it's going to be a little bit more difficult for myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So got to do a bit more planning around that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I got away with that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, one of the bonuses is you're actually taller than me, so it's probably. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Not much, but I wasn't going to say it's probably a good thing you're in a wheelchair because you're taller than me. It's going to get. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when I'm in my standing chair, you're like, you just look at me, don't you? Like, oh my God, you're tall. You're so <laughs> yeah, I never really think about that. <laughs> yeah. Because everyone just looks tall from my perspective. I just look at people and I'm really shocked like, when they say they're like four foot seven, like, are you? <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I meet people all the time, you know, like, and people are like, oh, they're really short. I'm like, most uh, people between sort of like <laughs> five foot and five ten all look the same to me yeah, <laughs> yeah. it is isn't it yeah <laughs> unless they're a child i yeah. engaged that you know they're probably small yeah. <laughs> but even my nieces um she's eight and the other one's nine and they're both taller than me now it's really weird 
because they're just like they they kind of like look like not obviously down on me but they from a physical point of view they do look down on me I'm like you're like nine years old and I'm the adult here and I'm looking up to you <laughs> it's a weird perspective <laughs> so how is it like with your family and that obviously they've been really supportive uh, do you feel like as the years have gone on like your relationship with them have sort of changed in that or um no I think we've actually got closer yeah well, that's like the same for me me yeah. and my family, yeah, we've got a lot closer since. They're just, I don't know if it's just because we live close to each other now, whereas I was living in Australia, that might be a bit. <laughs> I mean, like, we're, we're physically uh, closer. <laughs> but yeah, it's um, so it it's must interesting be that when you're you know near to death and survive kind of thing as well, you you realise what's important. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah you definitely you don't spend as much time as you can with, with that person. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think you're right. I think it is like before. You just take it for granted that like, actually, oh, you know, I'll go to my mum, you know, at the weekend or whatever, and I think, oh no, wait, I'm working now. I'll, you know, we'll, we'll reschedule, make it another time, and now it's like actually, treasure it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you don't speak know. To your mum for two weeks, would you? No, yeah, yeah, yeah. I never, yeah. You know, moved out and she um hardly ever spoke to her. Now it's every day. <laughs> 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 but no, we see her most weeks, don't we? And the family as well. I mean, well, I work with Amy now. Um, but yeah, I see my brother a lot more, he's down in pool, and um, the children see loads more. So I think it does just put things into perspective, because before you just worry about stupid mundane things, like, well, I mean, bills, obviously you need them to get by in life and stuff, but it was like a real worry, and now we're like, actually, if you go into overdraft, it's not, it's not the worst thing that's going to happen in the world. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, other things happen, and it's, it's just remembering what's important yeah and yeah i was i was quite selfish before to be fair and now i just think i want to help and you know undo like being in my own little world before and just being a selfish person and just like be like actually people out there do need help and things and it's you don't always realize that when you've not i don't even say when you've not had the experience but i don't know i suppose i was just happy not realising like what other people go through in their world yeah and it's easy when it like happens and I think oh actually should be spending more time with my family or doing this or doing that and it's perspective definitely I think mm. well I was going to ask to close out with any advice but I think that's, <laughs> pr that's pretty good advice <laughs> <laughs> appreciate the things that you know that matters around you rather than the little things so. yeah I know it sounds so cliche but it's true <laughs> yeah no, it's, it's, it's good like um it's amazing how such a horrific experience can actually lead to something pretty amazing yeah. for yourself. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Something that stuck with me, my mum told me about you, was that um, that you told mum that you had a choice. That you said, I shall either be unhappy in a wheelchair or happy in a wheelchair. Well, yeah. yeah. So you made a choice. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, either way, I'm still in a wheelchair. So yeah. It's the, yeah. It's one thing people always say about you is you hardly ever see you without a smile. Yeah, I could attest to that with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just brilliant. Yeah. That's, 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 um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. good for people to see. No, it is. Yeah. It's just a mm. choice, isn't it? Like, I mean, I do have bad days. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's not human, isn't it? You can't be constantly happy. <laughs> that would be robotic. really weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you never moan about stuff, really. No, I swear. It's just, no. just you know not letting it yeah defeat in it yeah exactly so is there anything you think i've missed that we need to talk about <laughs> you're pretty good you're pretty good you're pretty happy i'm very happy with that <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much both for coming on today it's been really great i think a lot of the information there just people hearing it you know is really great for them you know understanding what sort of life is possible you know yeah um with this stuff i've obviously talked to people that you know are doing really well in business but it's also great to hear somebody who's doing uh, and sports and stuff but it's really great to hear somebody who's like leading you know what most people consider like a normal life you know yeah having a job getting married you know ha having hobbies and aspirations beyond that with education and that it's really you know all aspects of life are great so <laughs> thank yeah. you yeah. yeah thank you very much yeah, no, I, it's been a really great talk and mm -hmm. thank you very much for coming thank you cheers, cheers. cheers. Cool. <laughs>